Who is this guy? Introducing Ben Whitaker, one of boxing's brightest rising stars. With a unique fighting style that's captivated fans worldwide, his highlight reels are viral sensations. Gifted with lightning fast reflexes, Ben masterfully dodges blows, even with his eyes closed. Yet, there's more to this boxer than his apparent flamboyance. Behind those calculated moves is a wealth of experience, including an impressive Olympic silver medal. And while his drunken master style may seem playful, opponents learn the hard way that taking him lightly is a grave mistake. In the professional arena, he boasts an unblemished record of six consecutive wins, five by knockout. Some may argue that his opponents have been inexperienced, but the truth isn't just in whom he defeats, it's how he does it. His showmanship in the ring has always drawn crowds, earning him fan comparisons to legends like Roy Jones Jr. and Nassim Hamed. But is he really on par with them? It's time to find out. Benjamin Whitaker entered the world on June 6th, 1997, in the town of Darleston, United Kingdom. He was raised in a working class home where his father, Tony Whitaker, juggled multiple jobs to sustain the family. From an early age, the future champion exhibited signs of hyperactivity and a restlessness that too often led to schoolyard scrapes. His father, seeking a positive outlet for his son's boundless energy, decided to channel it into a more constructive direction. Sport became Benjamin's sanctuary, a passion he embraced in all its forms. He had a flaming zeal for boxing and a fervent love for football. But as his teenage years approached, his father set him down for a significant heart-to-heart. -heart. Listen, son, he said in a tone that brokered no argument. You're going to have to make a choice between football and boxing. But to be straight with you, football's just not your game. Faced with such candid paternal advice, young Ben turned his back on football and laced up his boxing gloves, a decision that he never looked back on with regret. <laughs> the rise of the talented young lad to the top was swift as he clinched victory in one tournament after another. Even back then, Ben's distinctive style was evident, and it was clear that he was not just participating, he was putting on a real show. The climax of his amateur career, without a doubt, came at the Tokyo Olympic Games, held in 2021. There, Whitaker claimed the silver medal, a placement that left him so dissatisfied that during the award ceremony, he took off his medal in protest. Here's how the boxer himself recounted the incident. I had given it my all for my country and felt like I had failed. Looking back several years later, that moment will likely stand out as a significant achievement, but at the time I was too upset to appreciate the silver lining, said the athlete, expressing a past regret. I should have draped that beautiful silver medal around my neck and smiled with pride because that moment wasn't just about me. It was a triumph for my country. But things didn't turn out as planned. However, that defeat brought the boxer more than he could have anticipated. That medal opened many doors for me. It gave me a platform garnered interest from various promoters, and created a buzz around me that I hadn't expected. More importantly, it taught me a valuable lesson. Creating an aura of excitement, the boxer made a spectacular debut in the boxing ring in 2022, 
engaging with Greg O'Neill on the 30th of July. The match rocketed off to a swift start. Ben had garnered attention for his unorthodox approach to fighting even before his first official bout. He played to the crowd from the get-go, all the while never losing sight of the reason he stepped into the ring. At six feet four tall, Ben's stature towered over his opponent, giving him a clear physical advantage. Throughout the match, he seemingly toyed with his adversary, simultaneously flaunting his boxing prowess in a calculated display of dominance. In the build-up, you're gonna love him, you're gonna hate him, you're gonna watch him. Three skills of Whittaker. Then, in the early moments of the second round, it seemed as though Ben decided he had showcased his talent sufficiently. He abruptly ended the match with a decisive straight right to the temple, a punch that highlighted his command and closed the show with finality. It was a big oh, shot to get his signature for Ben Shalom, and he's first on his feet, and the dancing begins. Following his triumphant debut, Ben skyrocketed to staunch popularity. His knockout highlights went viral across the internet, showcasing him taunting and then decisively defeating his opponents like a reincarnated boxing prince reminiscent of Nassim Hamed. Seizing the wave of hype, just a month later, Ben returned to the ring to face Petar Nosic, a contender with an impressive six, zero record, undefeated at that time. Throughout all six rounds, Whitaker's dominance was unmistakable. He consistently hit his mark with precision and artfully dodged the retaliatory strikes of his adversary. Despite Ben's determined efforts to secure a knockout, it proved elusive. Noshik's resilience was undeniable, possibly owing to a particularly sturdy constitution. Ultimately, the judges unanimously ruled in Ben's favor. His victory was clear-cut, a testament to his skill, and it underscored his burgeoning reputation in the world of boxing. Can't match him for speed and agility and movement. Good shots there from Nozic, came back with the right hand, left hook counter, caught wet Ben Whitaker. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated, the surgeon, Ben Whitaker. In his third professional fight, Ben Whitaker faced off against Jordan Grant. Dominating from the start, Whitaker claimed the center of the ring and immediately began to pressure his opponent, leveraging his size advantage. All the while, he kept the crowd entertained with teasing antics, taunting Grant and appearing nonchalant. In a bold display, Whitaker even engaged in conversation and openly took hits in the final minute of the first round. Despite his unconventional style, Ben dominated throughout the match, as evident by the bruises blossoming on Grant's face. While Ben's comportment may not have been traditionally sportsmanlike, it never detracted from his control over the bout. The referee did administer him several warnings for rule infractions, but that didn't stop Whitaker from owning the fight. In the latter half of the round, a powerful straight right from Whitaker sent Grant tumbling down in a knockdown. Grant barely recovered. The decisive blow came early in the third round when Ben terminated the contest with a swift left hook. Immediately, Grant's team threw in the towel, conceding the victory in celebration of his win by knockout. I think the scariest part about that, the, the backhand that came through, is it wasn't even... Oh, and he's the game here and down, right to the very start of the round here, Jordan Grant, and he comes it down. On July 1st, 2023, Ben stepped into the ring to face off against Vladimir Boruski and went the distance through all eight rounds. Ben dictated the flow of the match, leading the charge and skillfully catching his opponent off guard. 
Vibrant as always, he didn't miss a chance to entertain the audience with his characteristic flair. Any slight confidence, possibly false confidence, that will give me The turning point came in the middle of the third round when Ben, with a series of swift right hooks, floored Vladimir onto the canvas. The fall marked a shift in the tide, with Barushki starting to absorb more hits. By the end of the fifth round, a visibly worn down Barushki made a desperate attempt to land a punch on Ben, who responded by mimicking and humorously taunting him, dominating the mind game. For the remainder of the match, Barushki was on the receiving end of Ben's offensive onslaught, managing only sporadic counters. In the eighth round, the referee intervened to halt the match, recognizing the unchanging dynamic. Vladimir, of course, expressed his displeasure, but the decision stood. Ben emerged triumphant with a victory by technical knockout. In his next match, Robert Whitaker went toe to toe against the unyielding fighter, Stephen Dreadhead. The choice of Stephen as an opponent was deliberate to notch another knockout onto Robert's professional record. The bout unfolded predictably as the disparity in their abilities was stark. Ben skillfully dodged his adversary's blows with such ease that it seemed like child's play. <laughs> a turning point came in the latter half of the second round when Ben, perhaps a bit too enamored with his own showmanship, had a slip up. And then just moves off to the right hand side. Come on, Come on. I don't think Dreda has yet found. Following the bell that signaled the end of the round, Ben attempted to intimidate Stephen, but his taunt fell flat. The momentum regained in the third round when Whitaker visibly shook Stephen with a barrage of attacks, causing blood to stream from Stephen's nose. Under relentless pressure, Stephen finally succumbed to the canvas after a particularly vicious combination in the second half of the round. Ben, known for his antics, stepped up the theatrics once more, leading to the referee issuing him a stern rebuke. Exactly that. Looking outside of the ring. He's got his man in trouble here and he needs to capitalize on it rather than speaking to people outside of the ring. I'm not against this kind of stuff, it's entertaining, but Reese Carter has had enough and he's having a word with Whitaker here. And I have to say that I'm with the referee on The climax arrived early in the fourth round. In a swift exchange, Ben landed a precise right punch, sending Stephen to the mat. A blow so severe that he later required an oxygen mask. It was a knockout victory for Whitaker, a mesmerizing display of his pugilistic prowess that underscored his dominance in the ring. In the climactic face-off, Whitaker encountered Khalid Grady, boasting a record of 10 wins, 13 losses, and five draws. From the outset, Whitaker claimed the center of the ring, effectively keeping Grady at bay with a calculated distance. The tide turned early in the second round when Ben Whitaker delivered a left hook that targeted his opponent's liver. The strike's impact was more than just physical, it marked the initiation of Whitaker's showmanship. In an extravagant display, he taunted Grady, fainting and contorting before him. Yet, in the latter half of the fourth round, 
Whitaker flouted the rules with an illegal strike to the crown of Gridey's head. Undeterred by this transgression, our protagonist provocatively resumed his mocking dance, brazenly baiting Grady and taking downright pleasure in his superior position. Simultaneously, Whitaker was testing the referee's patience, who, after bringing the bout to a brief halt, penalized him by docking a point for the infraction. In the initial moments of the fifth round, Whitaker unleashed a barrage of combinations, overwhelming Grady and compelling the referee to step in. The culmination was decisive. Victory by knockout for Whitaker, who had managed to blend artful technique with a dash of theatricality. Despite the frequent comparisons to the legendary British boxer Nassim Hamed, Whitaker himself confesses that his idol isn't the famed prince, but rather the masterful Mario Kindelan. From a skill perspective, Mario Kindelan was my idol. He once beat Amir Khan. He was the person who initially got me into sports and made me think, I want to box like him. He opened my eyes, the boxer claimed. Then there's Tommy Hearns, Purnell Whitaker, and in our times, Floyd Mayweather. These are the ones who truly drew me into the sport. Standing six feet four inches tall, the boxer competes in the light heavyweight category, firmly setting his sights on becoming the champion in this division. Formidable opponents like Baderbiev and Bival do not intimidate him. Blessed with a knockout punch from both fists and a reaction speed that enables him to perform incredible feats, he certainly stands out. I put on a show for the people. It's like dancing with the stars or Britain's Got Talent. You get it all in one package with me. Two in one, he expressed with a smile. I'll dance in the ring because it's always enjoyable. In the long run, I obviously aim to become a world champion. Undisputed, all the likes. I simply want to be listed among the best British boxers in history. When everything's said and done, they will put my name alongside the greats, like Calzag, because I want my name to live forever. This young prospect is declaring his intentions, but what do you think, friends? Does this fighter have the potential to become England's next boxing sensation? Or is this just another joker playing tough until he meets his first formidable opponent? Share your thoughts in the comments.